a mechanical pulpal exposure on an 11-year-old patient with immature roots during a routine operative procedure. Find out how I manage this and the remarkable outcome. I'm Bill Nadera, and welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. Tooth number 31, the mandibular right 7, had a mechanically exposed pulp during routine caries excavation. The image that we're looking at is a bit cone cut, but really that's only a cosmetic artifact. I can see everything I need to see. Now, if that cone cut blocked my visual field, then yes, I'd have to retake it. But for something like this, no. I can see what I need to see, so no retakes are necessary. The pulpal exposure is visible there on that mesial aspect. The bite wing shows a little bit of a better view of that exposed pulp form. The patient was asymptomatic and prior to treatment had been asymptomatic. The cone beam imaging confirms the findings on the periapical and bite wing. Now full root canal treatment is always an option for something like this and I see a lot of clinicians going in that direction. They feel that automatically once that pulp is exposed, root canal treatment is imminent. Well that's not the case. Our younger patients with vital pulps and healthy pulps, we really have to exhaust vital pulp treatment as our first option. Thinking about full root canal treatment on a case like this comes with a lot of risks and a lot of challenges. These younger teeth have large volumes of pulp tissue and to think that we can remove all that pulp tissue with, and establish these really great outcomes is questionable. Irrigation becomes a concern because we have these blunderbust roots. And when it comes to obturating these cases, maintaining the obturation material within the root canal system also is equally as challenging. So sometimes it's better not to remove the pulp as opposed to going through all of these challenges to try to perform root canal treatment. The positives here are the patient has been symptom-free prior to the exposure and remains symptom-free after the exposure. So we know that the pulp is probably in pretty good shape. After discussing all the reasonable options with the parents, it was decided that we were gonna make the attempt for vital pulp treatment and go in the direction of apexogenesis. If for whatever reason in the future, something doesn't go as planned, symptoms develop, an apical lesion develops, this is an expandable treatment option. Just because we're capping off the pulp doesn't mean that we can't do something different later on if what we originally planned doesn't work out in our favor. An aseptic feel is critical in all endodontic procedures. We all know that because practicing without a rubber dam is below the standard of care. But when doing vital pulp treatment, aseptic technique is an absolute critical part of this process. Vital pulp tissue has significant potential to heal on its own if we give it the proper conditions. So the proper conditions are an aseptic field because if saliva gets inside that tooth and we challenge that pulp already in this mechanical exposure and introduce another etiological variable, we're destined to fail. So we need to make sure that we provide this aseptic isolated feel so we have the best starting position possible. I chose to isolate this tooth with single tooth isolation and rubber dam caulking material. It's very important that all the caries is removed and we're down to clean, sound dentin. The restorative material was removed and this is a normal, healthy pulp that we're looking at and it's a perfect candidate for a direct pulp cap. Once the restorative material is removed and all the caries is removed, I'm gonna saturate a cotton pellet with 0.5% sodium hypochlorite and use it as a surface disinfectant. I'm not going to inject it into the pulp, I'm just gonna merely take that cotton pellet and rub the surface of the preparation as well as the pulp tissue itself to disinfect the area. And then I'll take a dry cotton pellet and wick up all of the moisture that's around the area. Once the surface has been cleaned, I'm gonna use a bioceramic type material or a putty material and place it directly on top of the pulp. And I'm aiming for about a thickness of three millimeters. I then etch, prime and bond the remaining tooth structure that surrounds that bioceramic application and I restore it with a bonded resin. Here's what the final PA looks like. We can see where the bioceramic material is versus where the bonded restorative material is. This is one year. And this is the remarkable thing that I see at one year. Not only do we succeed with the apexogenesis procedure and have those roots fully form and begin to close, but also look at where the bioceramic material is where that pulp cap was done. A dentinal bridge is formed underneath that bioceramic material. So this has not only worked from an apexogenesis standpoint, we were able to grow dentin in the coronal aspect of this pulp chamber 
And now that pulp chamber has insulated itself and the odds that this tooth is going to need any endodontic treatment in the future has now decreased significantly. The healing potential of children never ceases to amaze me. I always love going in the direction of vital pulp treatment, especially for younger patients, because we know that their healing potential is so significant. Vital pulp therapy is something that should be considered as our first treatment option when dealing with younger patients. These are very simple procedures to do that any dentist can do within their practice and offers a really wonderful service for their patients. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today. And to stay up to date with all my new videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm Bill Nadera. Thanks for watching.